Maybe you've heard about Tendermint as a consensus mechanism, but uh, what I will explain today is how it works. Um, that is quite exciting. So let's have a look at it. Tendermint, this is the consensus mechanism and the software that we use at Ponton um, for our projects. Um, it has been developed by a couple of guys from uh, Canada and the rest of the world. It's available as open source software and um, it is basically focusing on uh, the consensus mechanism for proof of authority based uh, blockchains and it implements the PBFT algorithm which is uh, practically Byzantine fault tolerant. Let's have a look. In the case of Tendermint, we use validator nodes. Yeah? It could be one, it could be 20 or 50 or anything in between. And these validator nodes are involved in the consensus mechanism itself. There could also be non-validator nodes, which are just further nodes who receive the result um, of, the, of the consensus, uh, which is at the end a new block that is created. And um, let's assume we have these um, five uh, validators here. They are the nodes. They um, are deployed on, on different machines. The machines should be, again, um, hosted uh, at uh, different organizations, usually market participants, or in, in different clouds, such that we have uh, a certain level of independence from a single uh, vendor or a, th a single operator. And as you can see here, these uh, validators, um, they are all connected to each other. They are fully meshed. Yeah? Every validator knows every other validator. This is not really necessary. It could also be a ring or it could be a chain of, of validators knowing each other. But if we have this fully meshed um, uh, situation where everyone knows everyone, everyone exchange data with everyone else, we have the fastest way of, of, of data communication because we don't need to indirectly communicate over uh, some hops here. And that um, speeds up the validation process. At the same time also, we have a, a quadratic complexity because if we have uh, 10 validators, each validator talks to nine remaining validators. If we have 50 validators, everyone talks to the remaining 49 validators, yeah? uh, which means that it doesn't scale very well because the, the communication effort um, scales in a, in a, or grows in a quadratic way, which means that if we have too many nodes, there will be just data communication and no real um, bandwidth uh, for, for anything else. It would just overload the system. This is why a number of nodes, maybe up to 20, is, is useful and why 50 nodes, which are fully meshed, are uh, already too many. Yeah? So just as a, as, a, as a rule of thumb. The lowest possible is of course one, but then, then we don't have any redundancy and that doesn't make sense with blockchain. But practically speaking, it's four, yeah? because we have one proposer and the three others are validators and we need this uh, two-third majority in order to come to a, a conclusion um, uh, if a block should be accepted or not uh, among the validators. And so the magic number is four, which, which more or less marks the lower end of the spectrum. And I would say something like 19 or maybe 16 is the upper end. Yeah? 16 meaning one is the proposer and the remaining 15 um, are um, divisible by, by three. So uh, two thirds of them is 10, uh, which means that the other five could fail uh, and still um, a consensus could be achieved and a new block could be created. In this case here, five validators who are fully meshed and talk to each other. And um, with each block, one of the validator assumes the role of a proposer. Yeah, so this is a round robin principle. This guy is now the proposer for the block to be finalized and the next block might then be uh, proposed by this validator and so on. So every fifth block is here proposed by one of the validators. And if a validator fails, 
then the others detect that because he doesn't respond. And if he doesn't respond, if he's, if he's incommunicado, then of course he, non-existingly, would not assume the role of a, of a proposal. It would be just the next one. Yeah? So the system is fault tolerant in terms of handling the case that uh, one of these nodes fails. If the proposer fails while being a proposer, the transactions uh, just remain in the mempool. They are just not processed in this case. Yeah? And then the, the timeout for the next block uh, occurs, but there won't be any proposer active, so um, there won't be any block for that certain period. And with the next period, which is then where this next validator takes over the role as a proposer, he would also then uh, include the, the not yet processed uh, transaction of the previous one. Which means, all in all, that this uh, system doesn't have a single point of failure and doesn't also have a single point of control as far as the, the operation is concerned and survives uh, the failure of individual nodes. It also survives a Byzantine attack. Yeah? So if, if, if one of the validators is attacked and doesn't participate, it's tolerant. If it is attacked and, um, and behaves uh, uh, maliciously, because uh, the attacker uh, has, has uh, activated some, some, some malicious code, it is also tolerated because this is not yet the ma majority of the nodes that has been attacked. So that is how this round-robin process goes on, endlessly. And then per block and per validation process, we now go into this larger loop here, into this inner loop. And what the proposer does is first to collect all the transactions which have shown up in the last block time, puts that in a block, and sends around this block as a proposal to the others. And the others validate that and approve the block or reject the block, or they are just not available, so there will be a timeout then for a given validator. And by the way, they, they tell that not just to the proposer, they tell that to everyone. So everyone knows from everyone if uh, a block has been validated if it has been accepted or not. And once two-thirds of all these validators have made a positive statement that the block is valid according to them, we go into the next phase, and that is the pre-commit phase. Yeah? So the next step is that everyone says, OK, I have received two-thirds from you other nodes. I am now in the position to go in a pre-commit state, and I'm telling that to you. So I, I send you a pre-commit message, and that's the next one here. And again, if uh, two-thirds of the others have sent a, a pre-commit to me being a validator node, I know that, at that the required majority of, of two-thirds is in a good state. Yeah? So I now advance from a pre-commit state into a commit state, because I know already the others are pre-committed, if for some reason some others is, is not really receiving from two-thirds of the other nodes a pre-commit message, this one may not enter into commit status, but it requires again in the third step, again two-thirds of the participants to be in a commit state in order to tell that to the others and in order to finally um, uh, commit for the new block and make this block available to the, to the applications. So we have a three-step process. And within each step, we have a wave of data communication. So bandwidth is key here, and a low number of participants is also key. If we have four participants, and if these four participants are located on the same processor, or on the same machine, or very close to each other at a very high bandwidth, we can easily achieve 10,000 transactions per second under lab conditions. Yeah? But reality looks different. In reality, of course, um, the validators sit in different organizations. We have much more latency when they communicate with each other. But still, we can achieve a consensus within a couple of hundred milliseconds, which is fast, yeah? because uh, the runtime of a message over the internet, if it is scattered across a continent, let's say, is still a few ten of uh, uh, milliseconds. So that accumulates then to 200, 300, 400 milliseconds altogether. But this is still a quite fast uh, uh, process, short time for, to achieve a consensus. So that is the inner circle. And when everyone has committed, the system switches over to the next one, who is the next validator. 
and um, every one of the nodes push up the results of the new block to the, to the applications. And this is done within a period of a couple of 10 milliseconds, yeah? Because the fact that they all come to the commit may deviate by maybe 20, 30 milliseconds. And once the commit has been received by everyone, they push up the result to the application. So the time span between the first and the last is maybe 20 or 30 milliseconds usually, which is again very fast. And we can, we can bring down the block time to one second. Yeah? So one second in which transactions are exchanged and stored in the mempool, and then 200 milliseconds for the consensus, while at the same time, transactions are already stored for the next block in parallel. Yeah? So this is how it works. It's an interleaving process which repeats endlessly. Again, here we have the different situations uh, for the consensus. In this case, the proposer asks the others, is this new block okay for you? And they respond to them. This is abbreviated and simplified. Everyone responds to everyone, but then I would have to draw a lot of errors here and it would not really be comprehensive anymore. But in principle, everyone responds to everyone. If someone responds uh, not okay, so the reason might be either a cyber attack, so this might be um, malicious code um, behaving in a, di in a different way, not approving that um, the validation was successful, but uh, coming with a contrary response. It could also be maybe um, an update of the logic which didn't succeed on this node. Yeah? So this is very important that we have the same logic everywhere in order to achieve this result. Yeah? But even if one doesn't respond correctly to, uh, re regarding uh, the truth, it is just the minority yeah? because there is still two-thirds or more of the other participants who say OK and therefore the result, the overall result, is okay as far as the new block is concerned and the consensus. And here we have another situation here, this node is down, yeah? it just doesn't respond. There is no answer, uh, but there is still an answer from the remaining four participants and therefore the, the fault tolerance um, of, the, of the consensus mechanism applies and still um, the new block is considered as valid. These are typical scenarios or typical steps. This is very unlikely, but it is addressed by the consensus mechanism. And this is just repeating again the number, the magic numbers, which uh, can usually be found in uh, PBFT cases um, of consensus mechanisms. Either we have um, four nodes, for example, one being the proposer, and the other three are the validators who participate in in the validating process and one out of three may fail, we still have a two-third majority here. Oh, this is again in German, I, I'm just seeing this, but just listen to my voice and learn a little bit German. So there's a, it's an advantage for you, yeah? so you can learn about blockchain and about the German language. Here we have the situation with uh, seven nodes, so again one proposer, the remaining six are validators and two out of the six may fail. Okay, it's just twice the number compared with the, with the upper example. And then it continues. So the next magic number is uh, 10 nodes, one proposer, nine validators, three can fail. Still with the remaining six, we have a two-thirds majority and it works. So this is why it makes sense to have seven nodes and not six or eight, but just uh, that pattern um, to, to, be, to be most efficient um, with the PBFT consensus mechanism. And I think that's my, my last slide. These are some findings um, that we came up with uh, when we tested uh, Tendermint and also other blockchain technologies. And uh, for us, specifically for the Enerchain project, it was important to have a minimal block time and a minimal period until the block is validated and until it is guaranteed that the result is final finite. Yeah? So what we see here is that if we use a block time of uh, one second with four nodes, the consensus takes roughly 400 milliseconds here. It's much faster today. We did this, I think, if I remember my, right, at the end of 2016. So now it's two years later. So this is actually today 200 to 300 milliseconds. But at that point in time, it was still 400 uh, milliseconds on top of the one second for the uh, for the block time. 
And then if we increase the number of nodes, so here we have 10 nodes, here the consensus effort time-wise is already uh, 1.8 seconds. Yeah? So it's increasing. And if we go up to, to 18, uh, we end up already with uh, 3 to 3.5 uh, seconds just for the consensus because of the quadratic um, complexity, because of the fully meshed um, uh, topology of the, of the nodes, everyone talking to everyone, sending a huge number of messages uh, in, 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 this, in, this, in this circle of nodes. And you can imagine, so this is... Um, a quadratic growth. You see how the graph looks like. You can imagine if we approach 50 that we are probably at 10 or 20 seconds that are needed just for the consensus. So this is highly inefficient and this is why it makes sense to choose something like 7 or 10 where the consensus effort is low. 4 is maybe a bit low um, as far as the number of nodes is concerned. We can only afford for one uh, which fails. Uh, if two fail, um, the whole system goes down. And of course, with seven, we can afford for two failures uh, out of the nodes. So seven is okay. And uh, as I said, today the consensus mechanism is maybe 300 milliseconds with, with seven nodes. So today it would be a bit less steep than, than, than two years ago. But quadratic is quadratic. Yeah? So with 50, it will still be far beyond the, the limit. Yeah, that's, that's how, how the Tendermint consensus works and I explained already in the other videos um, how this is um, applied to, to, uh, to the wormhole framework and uh, for processes like uh, decentralized trading and, and other processes. And um, we are quite happy with the, with the technology. It is reduced to the, to the consensus mechanism and to writing data into the blockchain, not much more. So if whenever you use Tendermint, you have to take care yourself to add additional layers, middleware layers. This is what we exactly did with uh, Wormhole. And if that is interesting for you to use Wormhole, then uh, feel welcome and, and visit our Wormhole website, which is uh, wrmhl.pontong.de. And there we keep you up to date um, as far as the development of wormhole is concerned. All right.